Have you ever wondered how close an analytical magnetic circuit solution gets to a full console simulation? Today we'll find out and the result might surprise you. In this video, we'll go through the full simulation process of a simple magnetic circuit and then solve it analytically to compare both results. Stay with me, you're going to see something really interesting at the end. Hello everyone and welcome back to High Walls Academy. In this tutorial, we will learn how to solve a magnetic circuit step by step. By the end, you will know how to model the geometry, assign nonlinear material properties, apply Ampere's law, and finally compare analytical and finite element results. Let's start with the problem description. The magnetic circuit shown has a magnetic core with the value given in the table. The core is nonlinear. The top row of the table shows shows the edge field in ampere per meter and the bottom row shows the magnetic flux density B in Tesla. The question asks us to determine the air gap flux. The core is the square type, the inner dimension is 8 cm, the outer dimension is 14 cm and there is an air gap equal to 2 mm. A DC current equal to 9 ampere is fed into a winding with 300 trains. All right, let's Let's jump into console multiphysics. I've already built the geometry to save a little time, but it's simple enough that you can follow along. I set the length unit to centimeter. First, I created the outer diameter, then the inner diameter, and then the surrounding air region. I also added a 2 mm wide rectangle to serve as the air gap and two more rectangles to represent the coil winding. And that's our basic geometry. Now let's assign materials. Under built-in materials, by click on add material from library. Let me change it here. Under built-in, I double click air and assign it. The entire model turns to air, but our core isn't air. It's nonlinear soft iron. So let's change that. Under ACDC, I double click soft iron without loss and then assign it to the core region. If you open the soft iron tree, you can see the BH curve interpolation. Let's get back to setting. However, the default BH curve isn't the one we need for our problem. To fix that, I have created a text file that contains the nonlinear characteristics table from our problem. The left column is H in ampere per turn and the right column is B in Tesla. Each pair separated by a space or tab. Now we'll import it into the console. First, click on clear to empty the current table, then click load from file and select the BH magnetic circuit, the file that you have already seen. And there it is. The nonlinear BH relationship has been imported successfully. You can click on plot to see the new curve. It's not a special material. These are simply the numbers given in the problem. Here, make sure that the unit is correct. The input is H in ampere per turn and the output is B in Tesla. I'll keep the interpolation and extrapolation settings as linear. If you're curious about what that means, check out our earlier video on magnetic core modeling. I explain both options there. Okay, I rename my material to nonlinear core for clarity. Under the basics, notice that electrical conductivity is zero and the relative permittivity is set as one. Okay, our material section is done. Next, we move on the physics. We need to define two areas as coils and one area as the nonlinear magnetic material. Since the model depth is three centimeter, here under the physics, I set the out of plane thickness to 0.03 meter. Okay, console automatically adds Ampere's law with a linear permeability. You can just here see the magnetization model that applies to the air region, but for the nonlinear core, we need another Ampere's law node. I just right click and duplicate it and clear my selection and select the core region only and change the magnetization model to BH curve, letting the console use the characteristic from our material definition. Now we add the coil option. You can just right click to add a coil or you can come here under the physics, comments, add a coil. 
I select my coil regions. Then here, change the conductor model to homogenize multi-turn. I also check coil group because these two parts form a single winding. According to the problem, a 9 ampere current is fed through the winding and also the winding has 300 turns. The conductivity is for copper is okay, but I change the coil wire cross-sectional area to user defined and one square millimeter is okay. Next, we need to tell console that the current in one coil segment is reverse relative to the other. Right click coil, add reverse current direction and select one of the coils as the reverse one. That's it, our physics setup is complete. Okay, for the meshing, I let console handle it with the default physics controlled mesh, but I change my element size to extremely fine because it's better to get more accurate results for this problem. Everything is ready for this study because our current is DC, stationary study is all we need. Okay, click compute and run your simulation. Now we can see the results. The maximum magnetic flux density reaches about 3 tesla, quite high, but notice that these peaks appear only near the edges of the core. If you'd like a full explanation on magnetic field visualization, check our previous video, I covered it there in detail. Here I mainly want to show the fringing effect around the air gap. You can already see that some flux lines bulge outward from the air gap. To visualize it better, here under the contour, I change the total levels to 50 and click plot. Now the fringing effect appears beautifully near the air gap, just as expected. Our model is functioning perfectly. Okay, let's explore deeper. I want to inspect the magnetic flux density along the line, first across the air gap and then across the core itself. So I'll disable streamline and contour to make things Clearer. Under dataset, right click, add a cut line 2D. I set x equal 3, y0, and x equal 8, and y0. This is our cut line, and this line crosses the air gap. Now I right click and create a 1D plot group. You can also rename it as magnetic flux density. I add a line graph because I want to visualize the parameter over a line. Here under dataset, select your cut line and notice that by default console plots mf.normb which is exactly what we want, the magnitude of the magnetic flux density. I click plot and you can see the magnetic flux density distribution across the air gap. To make it easier to interpret, I change the parameter to expression and and set my expression to x and plot again. Now if we return to our geometry, we can see that from x equal 4 to x equal 7 represents the air gap and you can see that from here to here the magnetic flux density remains nearly constant in the central region but drops near the edges indicating fringing and also we have magnetic flux density outside the air gap area. In other words, the flux is not confined strictly within the air gap boundaries, some of it leaks outward. Now I get back to cut line and I modify it for 7 and here 0.5 because I only want the portion inside the core. I now get back to my 1D plot. However, I have changed the expression to mf.by, which is the Y component of the magnetic flux density, since the field is mostly long Y direction. You will see that the central area actually has the highest BY value and it decreases toward the sides. So both B and H vary within the core width and they're not out uniform. Now I'll add another line to measure H across the entire magnetic path. To do so, I get back to geometry and under geometry, I add a polygon here. I want to draw a polygon just along my magnetic path to see the magnetic field intensity over it. So my first point would be 5.5 and 0.1 just here. My next point would be just like this. Also change the type to open curve because it's not a closed one. 
that's very good now i have my magnetic path and because we have added it later i should recompute my model okay that's good now i add another one the plot group and rename it as magnetic field intensity i add a line graph and here in the selection i select my magnetic path very well and i also change the norm b to norm h with is magnetic field intensity you can clearly see that the h isn't constant either in the middle of the core roughly the region inside the coil the field reaches its maximum it drops toward both ends showing local peaks and minimum ranging from about 2700 to 1000 ampere per meter so if we've confirmed two things first both b and h are non-uniform within the core's cross section second even along Along the magnetic path h varies significantly that's exactly what analytical simplifications often ignore and we'll see the impact of that in a moment All right, let's now switch to analytical solution and see how we can solve the same magnetic circuit by hand and then compare it to our console results. Because the core is nonlinear, we begin with an initial guess for the magnetic flux in the area. It's just a guess starting point. Then we compute the magnetic flux densities Bg and Bc, which represent flux densities in the air gap and in the core respectively. For the core, we divide the estimated flux by the cross-sectional area A. However, to account for the fringing effect around the air gap, we slightly enlarge the effective area. So if the width is x and the depth is y, we use x plus Lg multiplied by y plus Lg where Lg is the air gap length. Next, we calculate the magnetic field S strength in the air gap, Hg. Because air is a linear material, this part is simple. We just divide the magnetic flux density Bg by the permeability of free space mu0 to find Hg. The next part is trickier, the magnetic field inside the core or HC. Here we must use the nonlinear BH curve of the core material from our earlier table and we can find the value of HC corresponding to our current estimate of BC. And also we should use a linear interpolation between the data points when necessary. In the next step, we apply Ampere's law for the total magnetomotive force and this is the Ampere's law, the line integral of h dl over the closed magnetic path equals ni the total current turns we approximate this integral the lc is here the dotted red line of course we already know from the console visualization that hc is not constant along the core but for the analytical method we assume an average value to keep the math manageable from there, we can compute the current by dividing the total magnetomotive force by the number of turns and then compare it with the 9 ampere DC source in our problem. If the calculated current differs from 9 ampere, we return to step 1, adjust the initial flux guess and iterate until our computed current matches. Here is my iteration table. I started with an initial flux of 0.6 milliweber. That's just a blind shot. From that, I computed BG and BC, derived HG linearly, and obtained HC from the BH curve. Multiplying each by its path length and summing gave the total magnetomotive force, which divided by 300 turns produced a current of about 4 ampere, far from our 9 ampere target. I then increased the flux to 1 milliweber repeated the steps and got 6.7 ampere still not enough next i tried 1.2 milliweber which produced 8.65 ampere now we are getting closer with 1.25 milliweber the results was 9.3 ampere slightly high so i fine-tuned it to 1.23 milliweber yielded 9.05 ampere and finally 
226 millivolt, which gave 9 ampere. Perfect. That's our final analytical solution. From it, the magnetic flux density in the air gap equals 1.2 Tesla. Now let's see how this analytical result compares with the COMSOL simulation. I've created a table. This column is values that I have found from analytical solution. And here is the simulation. First, I'll measure the average of the magnetic flux density in the air gap from the simulation. For that, right click, the right values. There is an option here, average, surface average. I select the air gap. And for the expression under magnetic flux, magnetic select magnetic flux density in the y direction which is here click on evaluate it's here 1.18 tesla comparing 1.18 tesla from simulation with 1.20 tesla from analytical that's only about 1.7 percent error remarkably close now let's check the core i clear my selection and select the core regions but i change the expression to magnetic flux density norm because the magnetic flux directions changes in different locations Locations. Click evaluate again and our result is 1.33 Tesla. Let's add it to our table. The corresponding value was 1.36 Tesla, giving roughly a 2.3% error. Next, I'll compare the magnetic field strength. I define another cut line. I set the X to 5.5 from 1 millimeter to minus 1 millimeter, which is here on the air gap. Then I go click drive values and find the line average I select my second cut line and type mf.hy and click on evaluate. I get this number. When I plug it into our comparison table, the difference between simulation and analytical result is only 1.2%. Finally, let's see how accurate our assumption of a constant HC was. I've created already my magnetic path, therefore I can add another line average, select my magnetic path and for the expression under magnetic I can select the magnetic field norm and click on evaluate the result is 1914 when compared to our analytical assumption the error is about 5% that's amazing! Despite all the simplifications, the analytical method gets incredibly close to the finite element results. So, what we have learned, even with assumptions like constant HC and BC and ignoring non-uniform flux in the core of it, our final analytical results, the flux I mean, differs by less than 2% from the full console simulation. That's powerful! It shows that the classical analytical method still provides an excellent first order estimate for magnetic circuits and COMSOL validates it beautifully. Okay, and that's it for this video. In our next session here on High Walls Academy, we'll move one step further and simulate a single phase transformer with a nonlinear core, running it in a time dependent mode to observe actual transformation effect. If this tutorial helped you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to High Walls Academy so you don't miss the upcoming transformer simulation video. You can also download the console file for this project. Just check the instructions in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and as always keep learning, keep exploring and see you next time on High Walls Academy.